Welcome, today we're going to talk about the Nufi Air 60 keyboard that I use at my iPad station behind me regularly. Before we do that, a few ways to support the channel. Number one, become a member, curtismichael.ca slash membership. Number two, take a course, curtismichael.ca slash education. You're probably most interested in the productivity courses, and you'll find those at the education link. Now, the Nufi Air 60 is a wireless slash wired 60% keyboard that has three modes, really. It's wired wireless via bluetooth and then wireless via a 2.4 gigahertz dongle which is unfortunately not labeled so put a mark on it so that you know which keyboard it goes with this keyboard comes with pre-lubed or very low profile switches it has double shot die sublimated keycap so it's got two colors in it but the actual legend is done in a die sublimated manner should last a while the keycaps really shouldn't shine up for you one of the big things this keyboard bills itself as as a replacement for especially for the old butterfly keyboards that were bad so this actually has special little thin feet on the bottom and those thin feet are meant to go between your keys on your laptop so that you can take your laptop take this whole keyboard set it all up and then type with it i guess and i want to get that idea out of the way first because it's absolutely ridiculous like a laptop is about portability and instead you're supposed to take this extra keyboard with a brass weight in the bottom making it heavier and stick it on top of your laptop I honestly just don't get it. I can't see you ever doing it. Probably one of the worst parts, and we'll talk about the folio in depth a little later, is that the folio doesn't actually fit the orange feet that can magnet onto the bottom of the keyboard. So you can't actually carry it with feet that would raise it slightly, even if you were going to use it, say, as an iPad keyboard with the folio. We'll talk about that more later. And only the thin fit feet will fit between your keys on a keyboard. There's actually a link in the description or a list in the description of all the keyboards that says this supports that they've tested it with. Uh, I would never use it that way. It seems absolutely ludicrous to add a 500 gram keyboard to your loadout to carry with your laptop for a better typing experience. I, I just don't see it at all. If I'm wrong, and if that's you, I guess let me know, <laughs> but I don't believe you. Now the specs on the keyboard, the 60% keyboard, just like the Mojo 68 I reviewed a while ago. In the box, it has keycap puller, switch puller, braided, but folded USB-C cable to A. I don't know why they fold the cables, just roll them. It's so much nicer on the cables. It doesn't kink them. So this is a kinky cable, unfortunately. It has a super, super short USB-C to C cable so that you can plug it into your laptop if you're going to use it in that aforementioned ridiculous position. It has replacement narrow feet. So if you just need narrow feet again, because the original ones aren't working anymore, you just need to use the new ones. It has a few spare keycaps or windows. It has a larger orange magnetic feet to give it some tilt. Uh, it has sample alternate switches. So whatever you get with yours, it's going to have samples of the other alternate switches you could have got with your keyboard just if you want to try it. It has a USB-A dongle for the 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection and an instruction sheet. We'll talk about that instruction seat in a bit. There's two things out of the box that baffle me a little bit. The first is the stickers of the not, I don't know, of the woman, of the young lady dressed, not necessarily scandalous, but not, I, I don't know. <laughs> My daughters saw me unwrap the keyboard and they said, why is there a picture of a good looking lady on it? I was like, I have no idea. And the truth is that some men will like this, I guess. I, I, I don't get it at all. So the back of the poster is also another poster of this same lady. I don't get it. I don't know why it needs to be included in the box. Just take that right out, I guess. But it's the character for the keyboard. So getting past the lady picture on the back of the poster, the instructions are actually really good. They come in multiple languages right on there. So you do have to spend just a second looking at the instructions to say which was, for me, English, making sure you parse that out properly. But otherwise, it covers everything you need to know. You really don't need to go look anything up. You can just get the keyboard, look at the directions, and start to use it easily. Then finally in the box, we have the keyboard itself. The new Fiera 60 is a metal chassis, brass weight in the bottom, weighs in at 468 grams. Given that one of the selling points of this keyboard is that it's portable, I'm not sure that a heavier weighted version of the keyboard is really like meshes with that idea. Like it's, hey, this is super portable. Take it with your laptop as a spare keyboard. By the way, we stuck a bunch of extra weight in there just so you could carry it. Again, this is why I don't get it. Now onto keycaps. To keep this keyboard slim, they have razor thin keycaps that are double shot PBT with thigh sublimated legends, which I already mentioned. When I purchased the keyboard, there was a coast set to add on for $19, so I grabbed that as, as well. It's actually a darker set, so I'm more likely to use this long term than the included light set that kind of came on the keyboard. The new Fiera 60 has hot swappable ultra low profile switches that are Cherry MX compatible. I got the version with the red switches, which come pre-lubed. The keyboard came with a spare red switch as well as the two other switches, brown and blue, just to test to see if that's what you'd like. I have no plans to change them in this instance. As I said at the beginning, this is a tri-mode keyboard. It has three different connections, which are changed via the switch on the back of the keyboard. You notice there's really actually, there's three positions. There's off, there's wired, and then there's on with Bluetooth. 
So on a Bluetooth, if you're not don't have a Bluetooth connection, we'll actually attempt to connect the 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Great, it works, that's it. The switching is quick, the connections are stable, it does report battery level back to iPadOS for me, which is what I want. To change the Bluetooth profile, you need to hold function and press Q, W, or E for three seconds. Each one is one, two, or three, Q, one, W, two, E, three, for your Bluetooth profiles. Tensor pairing mode. If you hold the function R for three seconds, the keyboard will switch to use the dongle for its connection. Combining with the Bluetooth connections and the dongle, you have up to four different devices connected to this uh, at the same time, just by switching it between the different modes of connection. Out of the box, this has both Mac OS and Windows OS mode. You switch it with a switch on the back. It's really easy, works on iPad OS just fine. That's really all you can do to change the layout of this keyboard if you're in Mac OS land, because the programming console is only available in Windows, which I don't even get it. This means I can't solve any of my issues with the placement of the back tick key by programming the keyboard to have it more accessible to me. We'll talk about that in a bit in the typing section. Unless I want to go buy a Windows machine, just for fun. I don't, so I'm not going to. The other thing that gives me pause on the software is that there's a firmware update for the 75% version of this keyboard and the new type F1, two of their other keyboards, but they have a huge disclaimer to never update the firmware. The truth is things just break sometimes. There's problems in firmware. If you're like so scared that you can't update the firmware because it's bad and it may break, then maybe you did something wrong in the first place and you should get that fixed. Typing, as the name suggests, this is a 60% keyboard and I have another one in the Ampro 2. Unlike the Ampro 2, the Nifu Air 60 does have a full arrow keys directly on the board instead of just the tap keys from the Ampro 2. So the Ampro 2, if you tap shift, that's the up arrow. If you tap you know, the other keys around that area, then it's these down side arrows. I thought that was great. This one doesn't have it. It has a very small shift key that's just one character wide or one key wide. So what that means is I regularly messed up on the shift key on the right shift. I would regularly be hitting up arrow and then I would like shift and hold a key at the same time. And I just have a whole bunch of problems because when I start typing, I delete like multiple sentences. I honestly have never got over that. It's been like three or four weeks. I'm still having that trouble on the keyboard. So I don't love that aspect of it. Now, also like one of my smaller boards, the Mojo 68 is that it has a back to key under the escape key. So you actually have to hit escape. And I, that's what I normally do. I hit escape and I realize that's not the back to key. And I go back and I hold function and then press escape. That's not what I want. Now, because the Windows console is only on Windows for programming, I can't make escape the back tick key, which is what I would normally do. I would just say escape is the back tick key. I usually use caps lock as the escape key, which you can program in iPad OS manually. And I can't do that. So I'm just stuck with pressing escape going, oh, that wasn't what I wanted holding function and then getting the back tick key that I want. And I type that key fairly regularly, even in my reviews. If you look at the written review of this, you'll see there's lots of times I've escaped it used the back tick key so that you can tell that I'm pressing a key as opposed to just writing. Now, otherwise the keyboard feels pretty decent to type on. The layout's okay with the exception of the shift key and the exception of the uh, media keys, which we'll get to, and the exception of the back tick. Now on the media key front, they are kind of in the standard spot. You'd expect them on Mac OS or across the top on the number keys. That's fine, but coming from the Mojo 68 where I, they are uh, play and pause is function enter and then up and down is volume or function up and down and then function left, right is skip back and forth. I like that better. It's easier to get at. There's less risk contortions for me to be able to hit those keys. So I actually like that a lot more. Again, if I could program the board, I could change these things, but I can't because I'm in Mac OS land. Now the battery life it has a 25 milliamp hour battery, which is fine. It's about half, just over half of what the Mojo 68 has in it. And honestly, I don't even care about battery size so much. I usually look at it when I sit down to use it most of the time. Is it fine? And the answer is yes, it's fine. I have battery when I want it most of the time, and I don't need to worry about charging it regularly. I charge it, I don't know, once every other week, and it has battery, and that's good. I just plug it in once in a while. The truth is 99% of the time I'm using it at the iPad station behind me, so I literally just have power. I could just plug it in if I want it. Switch it to wired mode, and it would just be charging while I continue to use the keyboard. The sleep to save battery. By default, it was off on my board, I think. Now, in theory, you can hold function and tab and press C to turn it on, or function and tab and press X to turn it off. I did this a bunch of times and I really didn't think it was working, but then the board started going to sleep and it's supposed to take six minutes. So lots of times I, you know, I, I was doing this, I'd turn around, I'd make sure I'd, that it was set to sleep, I thought, and I'd turn around, you know, 15, 20 minutes later, doing some work on my Mac OS side of my office and I, it wasn't asleep. And then I started sleeping, so I really have no idea. The best way to save battery is just to turn it off and then it's off and it's not using battery. Now, RGB lighting. This is kind of the thing I really like about this keyboard, specifically the side strips on the top left and right side. So you can change these to do some indication of other things. I just left them with whatever the default is because they're just pretty for me. I'm not gonna use them to indicate battery or caps lock or which connectivity mode is active because I'm never gonna remember what color or what anything means in that respect. I'm not gonna worry about it. 
So you can change it with function and question mark to change them. If you use the left and right arrows, you can change the side light effect. Uh, if you go up and down, you can adjust the brightness. If you use a period and comment, it changes the speed of the side lights if you want to do that. The keys are also backlit, but they don't have any type of transparency, so you can't really see it. You just see kind of an underglow in the keyboard under the keys, not an underglow in the board. You can change these by holding function and the arrow keys to change the lights. You can't really customize a specific key to be a custom color if you want that. You can't set up your own necessarily, at least if you're on Mac OS for sure, possibly in the Windows console. I didn't see anything that told me I could actually do that though. Usually I just leave it on a mode that makes them flash when I type. That's fine for me. I don't actually need the backlights. I can type without seeing them, so I don't worry about it. Function and the left or right arrow changes the effect. Function and up or down adjust the brightness. And comma and period adjust the speed of the lights. Now we're going to get to the other... I would say, I don't know, lackluster part of this. Like this is like supposed to be the perfect keyboard for your Mac and your iPad. So it also can come with the Folio V2, which I got. It's supposed to be an, a great case. And it kind of reminds me of some of the old art comic cases you find where you fold it up a bunch of stuff and you can put the iPad on it. This was like the early iPad cases. It's supposed to protect your keyboard while you travel with it first. And it does that as long as you don't have the orange feet on. It doesn't close with the orange feet on it come on like why doesn't it you give me the feet it's part of the keyboard why doesn't it work and there's not even a storage spot i could even say oh there's a storage spot i just slide them in here and they're stored nope just i don't know stick them in your pocket just let them float around there you'll be fine now the intention for ipad users is once you get somewhere you kind of tent the thing and then you put the keyboard there and you start typing on it but there's some problems first the slim keyboard is still tall enough that it obstructs the bottom of your ipad so you can't do swipe up gestures really easy you're just kind of out of luck on that sorry Second, you're really limited in the angles you can use. There's only a few like in the top, I don't even know what degree, but just in the top, you can't like lay it down really well. You can't go really vertical or the iPad's gonna fall over on you. You're just kind of limited in the angles. Third, you're not gonna be able to move it around. Unlike the Magic Keyboard or the Smart Folio Keyboard or many other iPad keyboards where you can pick it up and the keyboard's all attached, you just grab the iPad. You gotta like use three hands because the keyboard's slightly magnetic in there, but not enough to really stay. And you gotta grab the iPad and you gotta grab the folio. So you're like, I just need to move my seat just like over one seat for some reason. You're out of luck. You just, it's that's where it is. Finally, this is not gonna work on your lap. It's just like a, you're just gonna drop it. So don't even think it's gonna use it on your lap. In my opinion, that while they say this is like an iPad folio support thing, this is really just a case for your keyboard and it's not gonna work with all the parts that they send to the keyboard. So you're out of luck. Final verdict, is this the best, as they say, iPad keyboard ever? No, it's not. Especially with the folio thing. Like, I don't know what they were thinking with it. It's a keyboard cover case, that's it. It's not anything for your iPad, really. Not in a practical sense, anyways. I'm never going to use it for that. There's things I like about this keyboard. It's low profile, it sounds really decent. We'll have this typing sounds coming up at the end, but it's only okay. Like, it's oh, it's okay. I don't, I'm not gonna complain about it. I'm not gonna say it's a terrible keyboard. I find it too slim, actually. I don't like the tenting. I don't like the back tick where it is. I don't like the media controls. So some of my other keyboards have some of these problems, like the Mojo 68 has the same back tick problem, but it has really good media keys and I just like how it types more. So I will probably stick with that one and this slim keyboard will just go up on the shelf to look pretty. So if you like the video, thumbs up below. If you love the subscribe, hit the bell. YouTube will let you know something happened. Turn off the notifications. You got better things to do, like type your own keyboards, hang out with your kids, something like that. Other than that, Support the channel, become a member, curtismichael.ca slash membership. Take a course, curtismichael.ca slash education. Members get my courses included. Have an excellent day.